Esprit has become so well known for its higher end mill turn, multi axis, high end capabilities that I thought I would do a video uh, showing how to program a two axis lathe part in Esprit to see how quick and easy these types of parts can be programmed. So let's stop our video on this part and let's start a new part. I'm going to create a new file in Esprit and I'm going to use an Esprit template. An Esprit template in this particular case includes a machine setup for simulation. You can see I have all the tools and the tool holders in the turret of my machine. See the tools listed in the holder. I even have some tools here that are not in the machine. You can think of these as tools as setting off on your tool cart or out in the tool crib but they're available just to drag and drop into any tooling position um, that you would need them in. So let's go ahead and start drawing apart. We'll zoom up here and you can see we have a representation of our stock and for clarity we can turn that stock off at this point and let's just start drawing our part. We'll go to the geometry toolbar in Esprit and we'll select horizontal vertical line command and we'll type in the diameters of our, of our part. Let's make the shoulder on this part 2 and an eighth. We'll make the, uh, the shaft of the part an inch. We'll go to the vertical line selection. We'll make our part 3 inches long and then we'll make our shoulder 875. So you see we just offset it 875 using some mathematical functions here and then we'll just put our line at the front of our part. Now let's add some fillets and chamfers to our geometry. Let's put a 3 8 fillet at the shaft and the shoulder. Let's put some chamfers of uh, 50 thousandths on the shoulder. And let's make a little larger chamfer out here on the front of the part. And we'll trim our geometry away to clean it up a little bit. And there's our part that we're going to program. Now Spree is a feature based CAM software which means that we're going to create features on our geometry that we will apply tool paths for. So let's for example let's select the OD geometry of our part here and we'll come to our features toolbar in Esprit and we'll say auto chain this geometry. So you can see over here on our list of features we have a feature chain. And we can rename these, um, call these OD or whatever you, you care to name your feature for clarity. This is the feature that we'll be machining for the OD. So with our feature selected we'll select the turning toolbar in Esprit and we'll select a roughing operation. And that will bring the cutting strategy window open here in Esprit and you can see the last um, lathe roughing operation in the settings that I did. And we can go in here and make the changes that we want, select a different tool, select feeds and speeds, select all the control that we have over the tool path and the different options that we would like for our cut. But I want to show the ability to, to use some of the real power in Esprit and that's saving these operation processes off. Since I do a fair amount of turning for demonstrations and part programming, I have some general turning processes already saved off that, will, that work for almost every part that I do. So in this case, we'll, we'll click the open button and we'll go to my selection of saved processes here and I'll select my OD roughing and it will fill in my preferences for OD roughing. I'll select uh, which tool on my available tools in this machine that I want to use and I just simply click OK and now Esprit has applied the roughing pass to our part it automatically sees how much stock uh, is there and how much there is to remove and I'm done. If I need to make any changes we can double click from our features list here, we can look at the operation list here and double click there as well. And let's say for example we want to 
cut a little deeper with this particular tool, we can go up to maybe uh, 100 thousandths on our depth of cut. I just simply make the change and Esprit automatically updates the tool path. So for, with this in mind, let's go ahead and program a couple more operations on this part. Let's select the face of the part here. We will create a feature on this and since we want to face from the outside in, uh, we'll reverse the direction of this feature. And we'll select that feature, come back to our turning toolbar, and we'll do a, another roughing operation. Now again, this is the last operation, uh, last solid turn roughing operation I did in a spree, so it's set exactly the way I did my OD. I could go in and make the changes that I would make this work well for my face, but I'm going to simply open my processes, select my face roughing saved process, select the tool that I want to use in this machine, and everything is set the way I like it, and I now have a face roughing operation. Now you notice the face roughing operation only roughs from this diameter in, because we've already roughed the OD of the part. Well, I would like to do the face roughing first, so in the operations list in Esprit here, I just simply drag and drop my face roughing to before my OD roughing, and you can see the toolpath is automatically updated for the stock. There's a slight change in the roughing because there's a little more material uh, removed for my clearances on my rough, and that's all there is to it. Now let's do a quick little simulation here, and we can see where we're at on the um, the programming so far. Um, nothing too complicated, but very quick and easy to do. Let's go ahead and cut the part off. Let's select uh, this geometry on the back. Again, we'll select Auto Chain, select the uh, chain feature that we were going to put our cutoff operation on, go to our turning, select the cutoff operation command, and in this case I'm not going to open a saved process. Um, I'm going to use whatever the last cutoff operation was. Uh, I'm going to use the same settings. I'm going to make one little adjustment here. We are going to rough uh, to this diameter. What we're going to do is we're going to rough down to just past the um, chamfer here and then come back and pick up the chamfer and then cut off the part. And I'll simply indicate I want to rough to about that area right there. And we'll select OK. And I now have a cutoff operation. Now let's run our simulation here um, and approximate uh, some real-time cutting and we'll run our simulation. So you see as we're running our simulation well, with all of the solid models of the holders and the tools and the chuck we're doing full collision detection on everything that we see and have set up. Um, we see the XY coordinates of the tooling and we see here collision detection. I have a collision with my cutoff tool because after I came in and did this relief I didn't have enough clearance on my cutoff tool or I didn't remove, remove enough material with my roughing pass on the OD. So let's go in and make one more quick little change on my OD roughing pass right here. We're going to simply extend from the end of the feature here uh, another eighth of an inch so we actually rough a little further back. So if we pick our simulation up right at this cutoff operation and see a spree simulation shows all the previous operations to the one I selected and we run our simulation here you see I no longer have that collision. So a lot quicker and easier to see here and a lot less expensive than finding this error at the machine. Now at this point all I need to do is create my G-code. So we'll select our common machining, the icon for the NC code, create NC code, and here's our code for our operations. Now in this particular uh, post we're going to get some comments up here that we can uh, either edit right here in the code or there are areas in the spree that we can uh, output that information from, a brief tool list, we can see our tool changes, our face roughing, our OD roughing pass. Um, and down here we have our cutoff, part sheet getting turned on and turned off for the cutoff. 
And let's say we don't want all of this long G code for our roughing operation. We want a can cycle. So let's come back to a spree. Again, on the OD roughing cycle, we'll come down here at the bottom of strategy and indicate we do want a can cycle. And we just simply select to make code again. And we now have uh, our roughing done as a can cycle. And that is how you would program a two-axis lathe part in a spree. Um, the power of a spree is that regardless of what type of part you're programming, uh, no matter how complex, the steps in the processes are the same. You draw or import your geometry, you put a feature on what you want to cut, and you put your toolpath um, on your feature, and that's it.